everything has a beginning and an end. The Hudson River is no different. You can trace its path 315 miles from the heart of the Adirondack Mountains, south to the great expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. The river brings life, it defines cultures, and it has its own story too. From its source to the nexus of creeks and streams that run off nearby mountaintops, that feed a high remote lake before flowing outwards to a riverhead, where at river's end sits one of the greatest cities on the planet and the vast saltwater ocean. Every mile of the Hudson is alive. It's alive under the surface. It's alive on the banks. And that life, that vibrancy, that culture, that rhythm is what river keepers out to protect. Really, the program started with John on the boat. And it started with people asking him, uh, the, the phrase was, how's the water? And the, really, the question they were asking was not, you know, how are the sturgeon doing? How are the shad? Are the fish recovering? It's not about toxics. It was really asking very directly, uh, is it safe for me to be doing this? Our program is focused on looking at indicators for sewage pollution, but really what we have is a platform for science, and that's 170 people going out across 800 plus miles of water every month to grab a sample. I personally believe in the River Keeper's mission statement, where they're here to protect the recreation and the environment around the Hudson and its tributaries. My designated area is the headwaters of the Lower Sopus Creek. And within that area, there's four sample sites. The entire Lower Sopus is about 34 miles long from the headwaters to where it enters the Hudson River in Saugerties. And uh, it's a bit of a hike to get to some of them. I take the samples to the Maritime Museum in, in Kingston, New York, where the Riverkeeper maintains a water quality lab. There they get checked in, and I'll get duplicate bottles for the next sampling time. So my routine is I get up, uh, jump on the bike, roll down the hill three blocks to the Navy Yard, go to my spot, my dock, where our boat is, where I take high school kids out rowing, and I sample right there because when we're putting the boat in the water, that's where they're gonna come into contact. It's right across from an outfall, so if it's rained a lot, I can see pretty quickly that the water quality is different. But some days it looks great and the number is still high, you know, so that's why you test. We test once a week on Thursdays in order to have the results on Friday so that we can post them on Friday night before the weekend. I'm not too surprised by the improvement of the river just because there are so many passionate people working on it. Our group is small, but there are many, many small groups that also have been working together. So um, we have teamed up and just even in the past 10 years, we've seen very good results. And so it's really exciting just to work with so many other passionate people that feel the same way that I do. So historically, the river was not a desirable place to be, and it's because the water quality was so poor. And um, I, I think that's changing. The number that I often tell people, which I think usually surprises them, is that about 80% of the samples that we collect 
are okay for swimming like contact. I think if you look now at a lot of the towns up and down along the river, or if you look in New York City, there's a tremendous amount of interest in, in redeveloping the waterfronts of these towns. And I think there's a direct line that you can draw between that economic opportunity and the water quality. For our events, people come from all over the world to, uh, to swim around Manhattan. We're at JFK uh, Marina Park here in Yonkers, and uh, this is a six and a half mile uh, swim that will head south uh, uh, in the Hudson River down to uh, Inwood. And uh, we have 200 swimmers uh, uh, from all over, all over the world here today. The Hudson River definitely has a reputation for not being the, the cleanest, but I also don't think it's as bad as what everyone pegs it out to be. I did, you know, talk to my dad before the race, and he was like, pop some antibiotics. Uh, I kind of took it as a joke. He wasn't joking, though, so, um, but I'm excited. 